What's up, y'all? It's Larry with Triple R Feeders, and let's talk about CO2 euthanizing uh, rodents and how our gas chambers and our euthanizing is set up. Uh, so first off, we got some 20 pound gas cylinders here. We like to have two, so when one gets empty, we can uh, you know switch over the regulator and stuff here and uh, go fill that one and we still have gas to work at the shop. I do want to get into 50 pound can uh, containers because uh, we're going through these pretty quick, but right now 50 pound canisters are hard to find and they're expensive, so we're just going to make it work with the 20 pounders. Uh, so then we go right into a regulator. Uh, so this is just a normal regulator for, you know, the cylinder you can buy it right there at the welding shop or whatever. And uh, the reason we want to use this is we can now regulate the pressure. You don't want to, uh, and, well, I mean, for one, it connects to the dang bottle. So you have to connect to the bottle. Um, so we need that connection anyway. Now I'm sure there's a way to connect without a regulator. I don't fucking know, but this was the way we did it. Uh, you know, it was easy right there. You buy that part, it connects, and have to figure anything out. And the regulator's good. So it can tell me the pressure in the tank, and it can tell me how much uh, PSI we're pushing out, which is important because we don't want to crank this thing all the way up. And then it's actually bad to gas the rats at high pressure. So you give them a little bit of low pressure, it takes a little bit longer, um, but you can control the pressure. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit later here in a minute. But then we run the hose that comes uh, on that regulator and it's going to have a connector i don't even remember what it is but it's the connector that connects to you know like your cutting torches and stuff like that and we just cut it so here's the hose that comes on the regulator we just cut that connection off we got a barbed uh, barbed uh, like a uh, butt connector in here a brass butt connector and then this is some heat shrink on the outside here and what it leads to is a air hose with a quick disconnect you know for an air compressor so those are butt connected together. Those two different hoses with a uh, brass uh, fitting in there and then a heat shrink on there to make it a little bit more, uh, you know, clean and airtight. And then two hose clamps uh, to kind of hold it on there so, you know, it doesn't pull apart. Uh, and then of course we do have the quick disconnect on there. Uh, the reason we have this quick disconnect on here is because we actually have six bins set up like this. Um, so these are just the bins you get at Walmart. Uh, yes, we gas them with bedding in there. Uh, they're going to do their last uh, urination and defecation um, a lot of times. Uh, so if you don't have bedding, then they will kind of get that all over themselves and be nasty. And we don't want our rats to look nasty. Uh, after you euthanize them uh, and they're dead, you can just brush the bedding off their bodies, off their fur, and they look nice and clean. Uh, so anyway, with this quick disconnect, uh, so if you know anything about quick disconnects, I can leave the gas, so we, we, if we're not gassing, the, the cylinder is off. Um, but if we're gassing, and we're gonna do several gassings, we can leave that cylinder on at the cylinder. And if you know anything about quick disconnects, when it's not plugged into something, then it doesn't, you even just heard it, right? There's a little bit of line built up, air built up in the line. See, it pushed that little bit of air out that was built up in the line. Uh, so it's sealed. The air cannot escape uh, when it's not plugged into anything. So, let me switch hands here. So we can put this on here. And we can gas these rats and it will stay right there, nice on that, that container. And we can gas those rats. And uh, once we're done gassing them, we can pull this quick disconnect off. No air will shoot out of here once we pull it off, right? Because it reseals it. Then we can just go back down to the next one, put it on there gas this one we do it for five minute intervals so we're gassing them for five minutes so they gas for five minutes so now these ones did five minutes with flowing gas and five minutes in the gas that means these ones are ready to freeze off so we put it on here five minutes gassing bang 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 five minutes but now they need to sit in the gas for five minutes we put it on this one bang 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 for five minutes when the timer goes off and this one's done we move it down to here and these ones are ready to freeze these ones can start getting ready to freeze, right? Timer goes off, bang, 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 bang. Pull this off. If we have another container, we can just run up onto our next ones. But then these ones are ready to freeze off. We reload up this one with new rats to get gas and plug it straight back in. So that's why we like to use this. Um, these bins are from Menards, or uh, sorry, from Walmart. You might be able to get them at Home Depot, Menards, or whatever too. Uh, 
but they're just the ones with the seal. It doesn't really matter to be airtight because if you know about CO2, the point is actually to displace oxygen. Um, but we kind of like to have it that way. Um, we don't have an air escape hole. If you notice that lid is perfectly solid and there is no air escape hole. Oh, but Larry, I've seen so many videos that say I need an air escape hole. I need a hole for the air to get out. I need a hole for the air to get out. You know, la la. Maybe you have it. You have no idea what I'm talking about, but we don't. We have a ceiling bin that clips with a nice seal. We gas them for that five minutes and then we let them sit in the gas for five minutes. Trust me, when the pressure starts to build up, it pops the seal a little bit and the air escapes. You don't need to worry about drilling another hole. Then when the pressure uh, settles again, you know, it starts escaping that, that, the oxygen. Okay, so the CO2 goes into the top. Let me slow down here for a minute. So the CO2 goes into the top. CO2 is heavier than air, so it's gonna fall down into the bin, right? Down to deep into the bin, displacing the oxygen. The oxygen's gonna go up. So then the rats no longer get oxygen, so they start to uh, pretty much pass out uh, because the oxygen level is slowly uh, deplenishing to the point where they pass out. That's why we don't put it on full max pressure because we want them to slowly run out of oxygen and pass out. We don't want to displace all the oxygen real, qu real quick and make them suffocate. So that's how it's a more humane euthanasia is because we're slowly displacing the oxygen. So as we're pumping air, or as we're pumping CO2 in and it's dropping down, we're pushing the atmospheric air up, right? And there's going to hit a point where this bin starts to build up pressure. You'll literally see the, the lid start to pop up a little bit because we're pumping air in and it's not escaping, right? Well, once it hits that point, it will distort this lid and the air will escape. The lid will kind of pop up again, uh, a little bit, breaking this rubber seal and the oxygen will escape or the, uh, the atmospheric air will escape out of the top, okay? Then when we shut that gas off or when we disconnect it and move it to here, once enough air escapes, this lid kind of goes back down and remakes another seal thus locking in all that CO2 with all of our fans that ain't gonna blow that CO2 back out and, you know, make the rats wake back up. We're not trying to torture them and do this over and over and over again. One shot, done. So, I feel like this video has now been way too long and way too complicated, um, but that's how we do them. And how we connect this here is you're just gonna drill a hole just big enough to uh, get the threaded part in. So if, you know, if you've ever worked with air compressor things, uh, you buy these little connectors at any hardware store and you're gonna you're gonna want a washer to make it a little bit bigger so you drill a hole there'll be a male and a female threaded part um, so obviously you stick the male one through thread the female one on you don't need these rubber washers and stuff we were just experimenting with them just get a metal washer again it doesn't have to be perfectly airtight uh, you want the air to be able to escape a little bit anyway um, so it doesn't matter just put a metal washer on so that you're not breaking your bin you know, because there won't be much bite for this metal to bite onto. So, there we go.